something happened. It was like in the Congress or something or a Senate hearing where mm. there was a guy from the head of NASA mm. was saying that uh, China was about to research the dark side of the moon or something like that. And they asked him, like, if we knew anything, he's like, oh, no, we haven't studied any of that stuff. But we're going to let China do it or something. Did you see that? No, I know that they, I just saw yesterday, they've come out with the best um, lunar atlas now. Like China's got the best map of the moon. And I'm mm-hmm. sure that includes, and they did send a probe to the other side, not, you know, last year. Mm-hmm. So China is looking at the other side. And why is there an other side? You know, Danny, one thing that I like point about the point out about the moon and I, learned this subsequently or heard it again from Randall and, and other people like Malcolm Bendall. But I had even kind of discovered it 20, 30 years ago. I saw pointed out that, um, you know, there depends on how you count them, say 209 moons in the solar system. If you went and looked at all the moons mm-hmm. around every planet, because some of them have multiple ones. So there are a bunch of them. None of them, as would be expected mathematically, perfectly occlude the sun. They do not have eclipses. Do we know that for a fact? Yeah, because you know How the because you, know you know the size of the object. So you uh-huh. know if you're on Jupiter, right, and you're looking at and you measure Callisto, a moon of Jupiter, mm-hmm. or is that Saturn? God, I'm gonna make mistakes outside mm-hmm. of my. Um, that if that's pretty easy to figure out, you know that thing is that size. Would it cover the sun perfectly? Right. No. Right. And mathematically, just think about it. There's no. Um, what's the likelihood of one object that's in front of you between you and another object being perfectly matching it? In other words, and this is what causes it, the moon is one four hundredth the diameter of the sun. So you stretch out 400 moons, you'd have the mm-hmm. diameter of the sun. Mm-hmm. And it's, but the sun is 400 times further away. Those are exact. Those mm-hmm. two numbers needed to meet to yeah. make it right in the middle. Right. Talk so about, talk about hitting the lottery. Exactly, Danny. Exactly. So the 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 likelihood of any one object doing that, it's much more likely it's going to be a tad bigger, a tad smaller, mm-hmm. a shitload bigger, mm-hmm. shitload smaller. But ours, for whatever reason, and it also always faces us. That's not always the case either. In fact, I don't think it's the case in any of them. We've got an unusual moon. Are you saying that? All the other moons rotate, or ours well, ours rotates, but in in a way that it always faces it, that us. weird tidally way that locked. I, yeah, tidally, tidally locked. locked. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go, Steve. Exactly. And I do not believe that is the case in the other ones, but I know that none of them perfectly clear. So we are the only planet that enjoys an eclipse. Mm. Yeah, kind of makes you think. Uh, somebody put it there. So this, I don't want to watch this whole three-minute video. What is, the, what is the fuss all about with this? We are using uh, commercial enterprises to bear the cost of landers of which we put NASA instruments that, in effect, become scouts for us before we ever send our astronauts to that part of the moon. Now, is that what your question is? Yeah, we're trying to get at what the Chinese are doing, you think, on the back side of the moon. Do you have any insights well, in that? They are going to have a lander on the far side of the moon, which is the side that's always in dark. Uh, we're not planning to go there. Now, and it's not, not always in dark, and though. what's the benefit of doing so? We don't know what's on the back side of the moon, so... Uh, that would be something that they would discover. But our uh, decision is that it's more profitable for us to go to the South Pole of the moon because we think that's where the water is. Why do you think they made that decision? I'm curious. I have no idea. Right. So we know China's doing something and we're not going to try to beat them to it? That seemed to define the term willful ignorance. I mean, mm, where you're like, yeah. eh, no, I just don't want to know. Right. When, have, know? when have we ever done that in the history <laughs> of this country? Uh, that's creepy stuff, man. And he, he, it got him on his heels there. Yeah. He, he didn't have a ready answer. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe something's over there. Yeah, um, man. The moon is a mystery. It is. It is. And I mean, I remember seeing as a six year old a moon landing 
and then growing up thinking, oh, you know, we had Space 1999, and we were all going to, I'm just old enough to remember back when we thought that we were going to populate the damn solar system in my lifetime. And shit. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> Nothing's missed, happened. stagnant. Just nothing's happened, man. And I found that all very odd. Mm. Yeah, something, yeah. Something, something doesn't add up. Yeah, man, it's super weird. Randall mm-hmm. seems to know a lot about that. He didn't really want to talk about it too much when he came on here, though. Yeah, I hope I didn't over-talk, but I, I do know that he finds the moon significant. And it used to be the Younger Dryas event and UFOs had absolutely nothing to do with each other. And now you hear it. You know, is it a breakaway civilization? Mm-hmm. Is it somebody who got the hell out of there that had a lot of capabilities, but they just didn't have the capability to stave off that day, or they left, it happened, and we are somehow an intended result? I don't know. But we are from it, and now we're looking back, discovering it, and at the same time finding out about the people who may have um, broken camp and gotten away. I don't know. That's pure speculation. Yeah. Yeah. But. Well, there's also, um, like, we look for planets that are just like ours that we imagine that mm. would inhabit life, right? Mm-hmm. But there's there's way more water worlds out there mm-hmm. than there are uh, planets like ours in the, quote, in the Goldilocks zone or whatever that yeah. have, like, you know, the perfect amount of oxygen or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it would be far likely that if there was a another species or alien species that was on another planet, it would likely be adapted and live in a water world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of these like recent UFO sightings have shown these submergible vehicles or these, uh, these vehicle vehicles that can traverse mediums and they they come out of the ocean and they go back into the ocean and and Uh disappear. And if they were hiding here, that would be the best place for them to hide because that's the one place that's been explored. We've only explored like, like, I think it's like 17% of all the ocean floor. Well, let's not get into that Dibble Hancock thing. Boy, they went over that percentage of... Oh, my God, yeah. And, and Graham was kind of way mm-hmm. off on his. He said 1% has been explored. Well, that's 30,000 acres, and no one's excavated 30,000 acres. If you call it explored mm-hmm. or, you know, studied, he was way off on that. So, yeah, we've studied virtually none of the Sahara and virtually none of the oceans. And, and hell, yes, if we were if somebody was hiding out, if they wanted to hide... That would be the place to do it. But mm-hmm. I'm I'm also, <clears throat> if not a pajama scientist already out of my, um, way over my skis, I'm also a radical panspermist. Mm. And have you ever come across the term panspermia? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the idea that um, rocks or meteorites from somewhere else hit here and that they were, uh, they contained biological material. Yeah. 